Perfect, perfect. You know, I texted you last night because I, I saw it. I saw even Grayson say the words. You could you could read it out, right? Going, I don't feel right. And it seems to be a lat issue. So you were giving me the insight, but just talk to the rest of the group here, your thoughts on what it means to deal with a lat injury. Uh, in two words, I would say they suck. Um, they're, they're tough to rehab. That's not what you want to hear. <laughs> um, they're, they're tough to rehab and they're tough to rehab for an important reason. Like that muscle attaches, yeah, it attaches to the shoulder. It also attaches to the ribs. It also attaches to your pelvis. Um, in, a, in a lot of instances, it comes all the way down and attaches to the rim of the pelvis, sometimes just into this fibrous portion called your thoracolumbar fascia. And the reason that's important is it spans such a huge distance from pelvis all the way up to humerus, your upper arm bone. And so when that happens, there's so many factors that can cause it to be a problem. We see this show up like many things, but specifically the Latin guys that throw freaking hard. And that's definitely Grayson. Um, and so they're, they're tough to, to put back together for lack of a better term. And they're not quick. So let me ask you that then let's, let's go on this because we've said this was something, and I think correct me if I'm wrong. This was in the past. Grayson's had an issue with this one. I believe Max Scherzer dealt with this last year where, and then he tried to come back and had the re-injury. So what do you think then the best case scenario right now could be? Like if this is, because it doesn't seem like this is something that can be, hey, hey, it can be a quick fix. You can maintain it right, right? You can maintain it, but it's something that you're going to have to closely monitor so it doesn't, if it already hasn't turned into something that's more dire. Yeah, I, I think that's a great description. I mean, you said Grayson dealt with this a little while back while he was in the minors, and he took three months off. So if you're talking about that, he's missing the rest of the season. Um, I think it is a very small chance that we see this guy in six weeks, if it's truly a lat strain. I mean, in similar New England Patriots fashion, we don't know what's what the level of injury is, uh, we don't know what exactly that imaging said. If you're going to tell me that it's a significant lat injury, you've seen the last of Grayson in 24. Well, that the only thank you for for joining. Dude, to I wish that. I could bring you good news. But but you know what? But this is why I love having you on for this exact reason because just being realistic and what you're what you're dealing with and what happens because the biggest thing so far that we've heard throughout this year. Pitching injuries, obviously, to players' elbows. We've seen it with the Orioles. The different procedures you can have for, for elbows, and for those that are interesting, we have another video about that. Yoni gave a fantastic description. And by the way, for anyone that's also wondering for physical therapy in the area, true sports, Yoni works with the professionals on a daily basis and plus for other high-performance athletes. So the, the knowledge and what he's doing – Again, he knows exactly what he's talking about. And, and the whole Kyle Bradis situation, my teammate, we've had this conversation for a long time. Yoni's spot on, which sometimes is to a fault, Yoni, is to a fault. But let's it's look. It's not to a fault. It just sucks. <laughs> okay. That's fair yeah. enough. It sucks. That's exactly yeah. uh, what it would be. So, okay. So let's play it out. Lat strain early, earliest time you're saying six weeks if there's a certain strain. What? Let's go down this path then, and I'm sure. I don't want to. Uh, lat any type of worst degree, lat terror, lat anything else. What does that recovery look like? Okay, so when you get into what's called a type three or type four lat tear, that's when it begins to come off of the bone, um, up in the humerus region, up towards the shoulder. Um, those are surgically repaired. Um, they have a very high success rate. Those guys get back and they get back to the previous level of function or success. You're talking about even specifically those athletes, their war, um, their strikeout ratios are exactly the same when they come back post-op, as long as it's rehabbed appropriately, obviously. So that's really encouraging. The problem is when you're in between, um, when you're, you're kind of hoping to avoid surgery and then, hey, four, six weeks into rehab, you're like, this ain't working then you got to go under the knife. Obviously, that just prolongs 
the comeback period. It's a very small sample size. We're very new in this lat world. It's not like Tommy John. So it's a small sample size of guys who have gone through this. There are a few um, experts in the area that do a lot of lat repairs. So he's probably going to have to fly outside of the organization to get that done. Um, and then come back if it's that bad. But I think that's the range you're looking at. So they'll probably give him four to six weeks to rehab. How good is he going to get? He goes under the knife. Then you're looking at uh, six months until he's really feeling good, possibly longer until he feels 100%. Those are best yeah, and worst and so, cases. So to go off of that then, because we're looking at the grades, right? You know, the grades, the higher the grade, meaning, you know, two, three, that means the higher the severity for everyone, again, that's following so typically, though, at least in this case, watching it, it doesn't look like we're going to get to the tear part, right? Because at least Grayson was it was during warm ups and something didn't feel right. So I'm going to be optimistic here on that part. Yeah. right? I mean, he was this wasn't in the game. This was him tossing on the side of the field. So the intensity wasn't as high. So right. The the the, the likeliness of it being as severe, hopefully, is less. Glass half full, Rip. Like I, I love the way you're looking at it. I love Trying. that that's optimistic. Yeah, it, just because like um, in in somewhat of the recent past, like Jake Peavy was on the mound. He unloaded a fast one, immediately grabs his arm, and it ripped it all the way off the bone, and that was traumatic. It doesn't have to look like that in order for it to be a higher level tear. It could have been Grayson's been dealing this for a while. All of a sudden, it became too much for him to get on the mound, and it's torn. Uh, again, I hate to be a pessimist, but I wouldn't read into the fact that it's warm-ups, so I'm sure it's just a small strain. Also, the fact that he's had a past injury in this exact area, he's already dealt with this, um, I, would, I would say that that means it's probably more severe of a tear than in the past. And you'll see this a lot with lat tears, where they'll tear it, they rehab it, they come back for a certain amount of time, however long, you never really know, and then straw that breaks the camel's back. You'll see this as guys increase in velocity, and you'll see as it increases in workload, like most things. I think it's interesting. Like Grayson has, I think he has the same amount of starts or very similar to, he, to what he had in all of 23. So his workload at the big league level is higher than it's ever been. This could have just been the straw that broke the camel's back. There's no way to guess as to what that MRI showed in terms of severity based upon his response or what it happened. Right. And so looking, I was just looking back on his lat strain from a couple of years ago and it was looking like it was a grade two, I think was it was as categorized between the one and two. So yep. context there. So be, because of that then, and, and earlier we, people forget, you know, he was on the, the IL for shoulder inflammation. Is there, and again, just help people understand this. And I understand when th some things are maybe off a little bit at times you can try to overcompensate. Is this a, ch is, could, th can this correlate at all with the inflammation with the shoulder or is this two separate things? It's definitely not two separate things, or um, I would bet that they're related. So the lat is fascinating because it's a massive muscle. It produces a tremendous amount of force guys that throw really hard they know how to use their lat to create velocity. And usually they're going to overwork it either in the weight room because they're just doing too much lat stuff. I don't know what their strength and conditioning program looks like. I know their strength and conditioning coach. I think he's top notch, but I don't know what that program looks like. That's one way where you overtrain it. The other way is, hey, my rotator cuff isn't doing an awesome job. So my lat is going to then have to overwork. Yeah. Um, and that's where you'll see these things blow up. So if the inflammation was sitting on his rotator cuff, his rotator cuff shut down a little bit. Now I'm going to rely more on my lat. You're more likely to pull your lat. Um, it's also like just to add complexity to it, which is why like my opening statement was they suck is because of the lat attachments down onto the rib. I mean, it comes all the way down, attaches to the rib, goes all the way up and touches um, a big part of the shoulder. So Grayson's a big dude, and it's a, it's a matter of how well he supports his midsection and yeah. teaching his core to function appropriately and to just get the core working properly, then to get his pelvis working properly, to get his shoulder blade and his humerus up to snuff. Any one of those things can be awry, and the lat's going to go to hell. So um, that's why it takes a little bit of time to, to get these guys all the way back. And that's why it's likely to re-injure it if you already have some damage. It's also, um, 
not to get overly intricate here, you have between eight and 12 tendons running through this very narrow gutter around the shoulder in that area where it attaches. And because pitchers work so hard and throw so hard, usually that tissue is not the healthiest. So it's very hard to get blood flow into there and for it to repair itself. Um, so I am sure a part of his rehab, if it's not surgical, will include the PRP world, like we spoke about with Bradish, um, to try to speed up this healing. And it's really this crazy jigsaw puzzle of trying to figure out what led to this injury and how do we put a Band-Aid on that to get him back on the mound. Yeah, I, I think I appreciate the intricacies because I, I find that fascinating because of the fact of there are so many little parts that go into – going out there and having success and how you need to make sure those things are in tune. That's why essentially the profession you're in, Yoni, you understand that's what you guys are focusing on is how do we get every single thing as properly firing as possible? Because if one thing is off, it can start a chain reaction, right? And that's yeah. the part where is it's very, very worrisome. So yeah, you know what? It, it, it's the wide range of outcomes. That's essentially it. It's yeah. a wide range of outcomes when you have more pieces involved. I, we'll we'll answer then this question because this is kind of what I went on. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that like and subscribe button. But um, the, we're, we'll get all hypothetical. If you did have, if there was a tear and things were happening, you had to go under. Um, you can read it right here. Will he be okay for all of next season if his rehab is great? Yes. Yeah, my answer is yes. Like I said, the success coming out of surgical interventions is very high and very good. Um, so much so. This was, I, I did a little bit of um, a deep dive into the literature. And in the literature, it talks about those who undergo um, surgical intervention, they do better in terms of their return to previous level of functions than do the conservatively managed athletes. So if he, if they resign themselves to surgery, the chances are very high that he is the Grayson Rodriguez you've come to know and love next year. Okay. So, Hey, the positives here, if everything goes right, Grayson can be fine. Again, we are awaiting to see the final results, but I think what's great, Yoni, is you are able to explain every which way. And for people that just tuned in, the reminder in this case, even if the best case scenario is a light lat strain, it looks like there's some sort of lat strain, right? The the best case scenario, he's still missing. How many weeks you said, Yoni? At, I mean, it's at a minimum six to 12. Great. Yeah. I yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I would really say I, I, we're really lucky if it's six weeks. The, yeah. you know, and that takes us all the way through. But you know, it's like I said, it's a tough muscle because of where it attaches. It's also yeah. the job of the lat is it's to slow the arm down as you reach all the way back to that layback period, right? right? And then as soon as it stops it from layback, it kicks on to fling your arm forward, and so it's under this massive strain all the way into that end range, that layback position. So you're at a major risk and let you, unless you let it heal all the way up. That's why it takes so long. And I think I got to double check, but I, I'm pretty sure this is accurate seeing this comment. But if it is for Schmidt on the Yanks and has had a lat strain, it's August, right? And yeah. and if and like that's a, that's the point you're trying to make of if that's – I got to look at the, all the details with it. But hypothetically, right there, that's 12 weeks – Right. So um, got to hope for the 